All right, next up, we have Hannah Cont Contrell from the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science uh, with a presentation entitled, Are Those Teeth? An Oreodon Story from New Mexico. Hannah? Hi, my name is Hannah Cantrell, and I work at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science, abbreviated as NMNH, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in the Southwest United States, as a paleontology digitization intern. I am also, okay, <laughs> I'm also an undergraduate student at University of New Mexico studying evolutionary anthropology and GIS. I first heard of this specimen in this story from the back of a van during the New Mexico Geological Society Fall Field Conference in the fall of 2019 from Dave Love, who is an emeritus professor of geology for New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources. He was so excited to share it with me as soon as I told him I would be starting a position there soon. I was also excited to hear it. I was ready to soak up all of the stories and information I could from these wise, experienced geologists I was with. He, Dave Love, and another geologist from New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology discovered the exposed jaw jaws in 2008 in Bosque del Apache, just 18 miles south of Socorro, New Mexico. And Dave Love said, are those teeth? To successfully get a permit, the site had to be visited by an archeologist from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Albuquerque office. After obtaining a permit by working with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Forest Service, and BLM, Bureau of Land Management, Gary Morgan from New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science visited the site and identified the specimen. It was identified as Merichias major, commonly known as an oreodont, an extinct group of browsing even-toed ungulates. Some current, current examples might be camels or pigs. These oreodonts were endemic to New Mexico that lived 35 to 7 million years ago. Oreodont got its name from the Greek word oreo, which means mountain, and daunt means tooth, so mountain tooth. The first use of this name was in 1869 by paleontologist Joseph Fidey, who thought the ridges on the side of the teeth resembled steep mountain peaks. What makes the discovery even more interesting is that the skull was found on one side of a fault line while the skeleton of the body was found on the other side of the fault line, about one meter higher than the skull. The elements of the skeleton just below the skull were affected by the movement of the fault and were poorly preserved. After getting the specimen back to Albuquerque, it took Dr. J.B. Norton, who was a volunteer at the time, he was a retired pediatric surgeon, several months to carefully pick away sandstone from both the skull and the skeleton block. This specimen is interesting for quite a few reasons, both personal to me and also from a scientific standpoint. When the skull was fully exposed, the hyoid bones, the bones at the base of the tongue, and the voice box, or the larynx, were found. The larynx was ossified. Both the hyoid bones and the larynx are rarely pres preserved as fossils. Based on this bone-like larynx, it is believed that the species was able to produce loud vocalizations, much like the howler monkey that exists today. This specimen has been the only one of its kind to be found in the Papatosa Formation, which is part of the Santa Fe group, as well as being the largest of the genus Merichias currently known. And lastly, a radioisotopic date indicates a late Miocene age of about 10 million years, making it the youngest oreodont known from New Mexico. This story has stuck with me because it's one of the first detailed collection stories I had ever heard. When I started to get to know Gary Morgan better, I eventually asked him to show me this specimen. When I finally got to see it, the story came full circle. This oreodont is definitely my favorite specimen in the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science Paleontology Collection. The stories it shares with us are great examples of the stories that all specimens in natural history collections can tell. And this is why it's important to effectively manage museum collections data to keep those stories around and told for years to come. Thank you all so much for watching.